Hello everybody and thank you again for joining us for another episode of Taz Talks. Today I'm joined by the amazing Heather Peace. We've met before a couple of times and I was delighted when she said she'd join us for, for one of these awesome episodes. So before I go any further, Heather, can I hand over to you for a minute and just tell everybody who's watching who you are, what you stand for, what you do. I'm sure they'll all know, but just in case. <coughs> yeah, um, my name's Heather Peace. I am an actress, musician, LGBT activist, mother of three, uh, stuck in the house like everybody else. Um, that's it really, and uh, what do I stand for? Um, fairness, <laughs> um, positivity, and kindness. Well, they're pretty good things to stand for. I'd say that that pretty much sums it up, yeah. I reckon if somebody had asked me to describe you in the brief times what I'd met, I think I would have said about the same. So, how are, you, how are you doing, Taz? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Crazy busy. The lockdown's all right, you know? Yeah. So all these people saying they're going stir crazy, and I'm kind of thinking, I'm doing okay. <laughs> doing all right. I seem to be pulling longer hours now than I was before. Yeah, it depends if you it depends if you're okay in your own head. Some people aren't very comfortable yeah. being on their own and having to listen to their um voices in the head as it were. Do you know what I mean? Like, Absolutely. Um, if I, I go back a few years back, I would have I would have been struggling. But yeah. you know, put a lot of work in. What about you? How are you finding it? Well, it's it's funny, isn't it? I've I've sort of seen a couple of actor friends on Twitter sort of say you know, that they're, they're, they're isolating on their own, genuinely on their own, and they're struggling a bit. Um, mm. And I thought about sort of replying, because I think everybody's experience of this is ultimately massively different. Like yeah. one polar opposite of people like literally saying, I'm, I, I can't cope anymore being here on my own, you know, regardless of having Netflix and books and all of that stuff, you're just not having that physical contact. And I think... Yeah. I think physical contact is really important. Um, I once had a poster on, on, a, on a wall of a bathroom at home that said, I think it said three hugs a day for survival, four for stability and five for growth. It was something like that that was, yeah. that was on a bathroom wall and it sort of makes sense. And it, of course, I'm not starved of that. I've got yeah. three small people who literally won't leave me alone. So I'm not <laughs> bored. I'm not lonely. I'm not depressed because I'm just alone. Um, but I am absolutely shattered. <laughs> but I can deal with that. I can yeah, deal yeah. with that. It's pretty, pretty full on, but we've kind of found our routine now. We, we definitely have a structure to the day, which I think was really, really important. At that first week, I felt very sketchy, um, didn't really know how this was going to pan out. Um, but between us and my wife, Ellie, who's a teacher, so she's going in sometimes as well. Um, we, we've found our peaks and troughs in the day and the girls mm. and my three girls are sort of it's amazing how quickly they do adapt um, and yeah. my older one's getting a bit cross now but um yeah so that's kind of where we're at so I, I what would an ideal world would be being able for me to swap my life for a week with one of those people who's bored and lonely <laughs> and then, yeah. then they definitely want their life back and I definitely want mine <laughs> I've heard that so many times, particularly people with kids in yeah. the, whole, the homeschooling things. How old are yours? So Annie is five on Friday. So we've, wow. got to do, we've kind of got to do the birth. We had everything booked. It's just one of them. You know, it, it is what it is. Um, so we're having a pyjama party at home and we've got a playlist set up on house party with all our friends so that they can have like, they'll put their pyjamas on and dance and then they get bored in about six minutes. Um so yeah it's her but so she's five on friday and the twins are three in june um but no, then you're shattered yeah i mean <laughs> i think had it been about eight months ago with the twins it would have been even worse but now yeah. they they can communicate really well they can play with annie really quite well it does hit a point where i think she gets cross because they'll play together for a couple of hours very well and then they just want to destroy everything she does crumple her drawings or knock down the building blocks that she's done um, so we built a tent in her room and that's like her quiet space where she can just go and because she goes from naught to a hundred I, I, I literally don't recognize it. it's happened during lockdown yeah. um, where when she's angry it, it's like a firecracker yeah. and, I, I don't, and I think it's okay to you have to have a place to shout and scream I and mean, she just goes ah. so we've done this tent with lots of cushions and things and soft things in there uh, touchy-feely things that so she can go and sit and she's allowed to just literally let rip 
That sounds amazing. I want one of those tents. I know. I know. Sometimes you just want to stand on top of a hilltop and just just scream so loudly, don't you? You know, like that thing in the cartoons where they used to scream into a jar and then run to the top of the hill and release it. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. yeah. So I live in Lincolnshire. There's no hills here. It's just flat. It's just oh no. <laughs> but hey. So what what's it like for you having Ellie have to go out? What, what does that feel like? Yeah, it's um, it, it's not that often. Um, she's going in every week, but it's either one or two days. Um, so they've got, I think, I can't remember what she said. I've been making, I think it's 40 or 50 kids. So it's vulnerable kids um, and key workers kids at the school that she's at in Horsham. Um, so she, they'll have a really skeleton staff um, and they're going in over the Easter holidays as well, which I think is wonderful. Um, you know, so she's in tomorrow. And then it's, it is, it's quite chaotic then. <laughs> it's just me. But I think, I think the thing is when it's those days, um, I literally do nothing else. I don't pick up my phone. I don't try and do any work because I'm, I'm, I'm doing an acoustic album at the moment during lockdown um, electronically between me and my guitarist, uh, Michael. So we're doing right. stuff, um, but I just don't touch any of it. And, and there's something about, I think the kids are really quite enjoying that contact because I would normally set games up for them, set stuff up and then try and totter away and do some work. Yeah. Um, so I think it's just committing to just being with them that's the important thing. Um, it's yeah. a really big lesson, isn't it, in being in the moment? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and there's, something, there's something really beautiful happening. Like I think the kids are going to come out of this with a stronger bond between them. Yeah. And certainly me and Ellie are like, we're so lucky that we're not one of those couples that's going to be divorced at the end of this. <laughs> yeah, Ash and I have said the same. Yeah, really lucky. We, we, yeah. We've always had a great, uh, a same sense of humour and we've made each other laugh a lot through this. And Even I, when you don't want to. <laughs> yeah, completely, completely. Yeah. And I think, I think that um, I'm, I'm, I'm not hating it at all. Like there's something quite nice about the pace yeah. at the moment. And I think the memories of this time in a couple of years time will be really really special do you remember yeah. when yeah. you know totally agree Don't know. so what about before were you and Ellie managing to spend as much time together and with the kids before lockdown or has this kind of created a shit we need to do this more scenario I uh, the, the second uh, yeah. Yeah, we need to do this more I think the one thing that's been an absolute eye opener and we've been blessed with the weather yeah. has been about one allowance outside the house per day. Mm -hmm. So prior to lockdown, we would have always gone to playgrounds or taken them down to the seafront where there's lots of stuff to do and there's bouncy castles and all of this and all that extraneous stuff, which of course is all closed. So now for our one bit of exercise, we, we, we find a quiet bit of woods and we go on a nature trail and we mm -hmm. find twigs and leaves and we talk about the bird song or there's a velodrome just down the road like a, it's massive and hardly anyone's on there if there's six people at a time on there you know you'd go out for your half an hour yeah. and Annie's learnt to cycle literally oh, wow. last week and um, so we just go down there we whip around the velodrome and we come home but all the time because you're not getting in the car mm -hmm. you, you're noticing things on the streets you know the rainbows in the windows or mm -hmm whatever whatever it is the pretty flowers because you know thank, thankfully it's not that terrible weather we had yeah a few weeks before i think yeah. it would have been a very different situation it would um so yeah the, it, it's the small things it's the small things there was just one time when i was a bit like i wish we weren't in this and 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 i'd had too much wine i will admit mm -hmm. and i had a hangover and my usual oh. cure would be to go swimming and I realised I couldn't cross the pool. <laughs> <laughs> you had to suffer through the hangover. Yeah, normally I'd just dive straight in, have a swim in it before. Yeah. yeah. But, so will you do things differently afterwards, do you think? Yeah, definitely definitely not not um not going for all that extraneous nonsense of, of bouncy castles, playgrounds. I think they've really enjoyed getting in touch with nature. Yeah. For sure. We, we 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 bought a bird table while we're here and we've just enjoyed watching the birds starting to come now they only arrived like four days ago and obviously they take a little bit of time to get used to it and it's yeah. starting to happen now so i'll just sit at the window and watch them how amazing is that really it's is the simple stuff, it's the stuff. Book, you know yeah. so they can see what yeah watch this watch that 
Yeah. Do you remember those little eye spy books that, that I had when we were kids? And you could take them out in nature and you took ticked off all the different yeah. species. You could do some of those again. Yeah, for sure. For sure. There is something really magical about it. I think um, the hardest thing is thinking about people where their lives have crashed. I think I, yes. I take on board too, if I think too deeply, I can feel really heavy hearted for people who aren't in our situation. Absolutely. You know, we have a little backyard. We're not mm. stuck in a flat. And mm. um, we have a great relationship mm. not with someone who's abusive. And I think, yeah. I think the bigger picture is utterly terrifying, to be honest. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's difficult. It can be difficult not to go there. What What have you been doing to kind of stop yourself sinking into the the, the kind of drama of the big picture stuff going on? The music, definitely yeah. the music. The funny thing was uh, this acoustic thing that I'm doing was not. I, I've had lovely fans of mine who've always wanted me to do like a covers album, and because I'm a writer, I just poo pooed it and didn't do it. And I think when my twins are going to sleep, I, I stay with them until they go to sleep, whether you mm. should or not, but I do. Um, and after their stories, I've taken to playing them Eva Cassidy because it sends them to sleep, but it's classic songs. So they're learning Beautiful somewhere music. over a rainbow, imagine, mm. fields yeah. of gold. Yeah. And it was while I was listening to that, that I went, oh, do you know what, stuff it, I'm gonna do my own. Yeah. Um, so that's what I've done. And I started learning classics. I've done things like Only You, Yazoo, and uh, here comes the rain again. Wow. Your rhythmics. Yeah. yeah. And just done different arrangements. And that's the thing, because I get lost in that and I can just, so after the kids go to bed, I come up and say, I'll show you, look, I've got a little, little studio set up, look. It's like a spaceship. How cool is that? I've got my, and then there's my little studio mic set up, so this thing. Yeah. I can yeah, yeah. stick it in the middle of the room and computers and whatnot. So I can pretty much do it from here. That's cool. amazing. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to actually release the album that you're yeah, that you're I've got brilliant. to. Taz, I've got to. So the plan is, I don't know how I'm going to do it. Um, I want to do an online gig, but obviously, I mean, we've got away with it because they're having a bit of a quiet moment downstairs. After lunch is, is Disney film time. We, this is part of our... We times this well, then. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so I want to do a gig, but I'm like, but the kids are in the house all the time. So <laughs> there's every chance that they'll come up. But um, the idea matter? is... In the scheme of things, if the kids interrupted sure. your gig, wouldn't your fans just love it more? They would, but they won't go, you see. They, 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 once they're in the room, they won't go. No, I'll get them singing with you. Hold charm to it. <laughs> um, so, no, the, so the plan would be, I want to do the gig for free, because the fact is that um, you can do these things where people can pay to watch online gigs, but loads of people have lost income. Loads yeah. of people. All, so I had, I had tour dates in April. And, and Yeah, I saw you got one on the 22nd coming. Oh, you, you know, so... Anyway, um, as you know, the entertainment industry has just crashed completely. Yeah. So I don't want to charge for the gig because there's other people who don't have anything coming in as well. Yeah. So I thought I'll do the gig. And then if you're one of the lucky ones that hasn't lost their entire livelihood, you can buy the CD. Yeah. That's or stick fun. a donation for charity link up and let people donate if they want to as well. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, that's just well, stuff you can do. So that's when should we expect this mega gig? So I'm looking forward to it already now. Um, yeah, I know. Uh, It'll be during lockdown, so probably not next week. Probably the week after. Oh wow! Um, really soon then. Yeah, because I'm I'm still I'm still like recording the record, um, and then I've got to get up to speed on on it all being live. You know. Cool. And what about the stuff that you're recording remotely? You were saying earlier that you didn't stuff yeah, you well, wanted to. Well, that's that's the that's the acoustic thing. So I I lay down the piano. I yeah. send it over to my guitarist, he, he pings me back guitar parts and then I whack them in there and then I see if I want any more little bits and then I've got a vocal mic arriving today, I've got one but it's not good enough um, uh, so I start the vocals this afternoon after I get off the phone to you. So what you're saying is this has given you an excuse to buy toys? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I was the same one who was going to do this series, it's like we've got to get the mic, got to get a proper one, can't just have these? Yeah, ultimately it's a, ultimately it's, it's a good investment. It is a good it investment because if I get a really decent mic here, I don't need to hire a studio anymore. And Perfect. that's really expensive. Which so means well, you get more family time again. Yeah. Well, you get more time with them locked downstairs watching Disney. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. So what's it been like for kind of outside of the family? Because again, it's been, Ash and I keep saying how lucky we are. Because I mean, we've, we've been together 22 years in a couple of weeks. And we've always more by accident than choice, ended up working in the same spot. 
loads of times because our career paths have been similar. We've ended up in the same newsrooms and then we ended up running a business together. And so this for us, piece of cake. And it sounds yeah. like it's the same for you guys. How long have you guys been together now? Mm. <laughs> Married in, well, civil partner 2013. Since 2010, 10 years. 10 years. Ten years. We've known wow. each 20, you see, because she, she was um, in my football team. Uh, so oh, we, you're not stereotype at all, are you? We're yeah, not in we, the football team. We've got a lesbian love story. She was the left wing. We, she was wow. left, left back and I was left forward. Not because I'm left footed, just because the right winger was so good. <laughs> well, it's always better to be a, ring, a winger than a right flanker, I think. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. So, um, no, we, we are team players. We are team players and um, we don't get this kind of time together. Yeah. Um, and I'm kind of glad of it. It's been really, really nice getting to know each other again. Not getting to know each other, but I don't know. I don't know. I felt really, it's felt really connected and really strong. Yeah. Um, and also like when, when we do hit points, if you do hit points where when all the kids are just having a terrible day, yeah. um, the, the, the mommy, 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 you hit a point where you're going to go... <laughs> And we just know when each other's going to do that. And she'll say to me, go, go, go upstairs, second hour. Or likewise, she comes up here. It's just a little top room that we've got. And, yeah. and she'll come up and do some yoga or whatever. So we, we can read each other quite well. Yeah. Um, but neither of us is lazy. Um, neither of us tries to shirk anything. So it takes the other one to say, you need time. You need some time away. So important. I think we've had a couple of little blips and then gone, hold on a minute, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's just because we're both getting stressed, our breath a bit stir crazy. And you yeah. notice, and that's really yeah. good. I yeah. think that level, something like this takes a really deep level of honesty to yeah. be able to read and acknowledge without then going into drama over it as well. Yeah, yeah, completely. I mean, I don't think we've really had that much of a crossword. We've certainly yeah. had less than we've had on a normal day where she's working Same here. Time. How's that work? Really? Is there, some, is, is there something subconscious that you just know that this is the unit? Stuff isn't getting to me. Stuff isn't getting to me that would normally. I don't know. Why do you think that is? Because I keep saying throughout this, when because obviously I'm still doing my coaching practice between all this time. Some of my speaking gigs have gone online, which has been weird, but it's kind of worked. But I haven't... I haven't had the levels of stress that I've seen a lot of people having. I've just got this deep level of, I, I just trust that it'll be okay. I don't know how or why. I just know. I think because we're, we're okay. lucky. We're lucky. You know, I think, again, it just comes back to those people who are literally can't make rent payments and are panicking. Um, I mean, yeah, there's financial panic for sure. Like of all of, all of my work has been whipped from underneath me. Yeah. Um, but I always find a way around that, like doing this acoustic record, you go, okay, that's all gone. And you have a couple of days of like, shit. And I, I really shit myself. Yeah. Um, Cause you know, the fact is even when this lockdown comes, it gets less, it doesn't mean they're going to allow gigs and festivals and all of that. And it's going to take think, people time to build up because everybody's income's been hit. Yeah, yeah. My, I had a big one right at the start. My three biggest paying clients fell off overnight. Yeah. And like you, I went into that, right, what can it's I hard, do? hard, isn't it? Yeah. But then I went into, what can I do? So I did things like reopening my budget package and widening that and doing lots of stuff. My theory was that if I did more and more to serve than those who were able, that would naturally attract more cash coming in. Yeah. So I'm working for longer hours for maybe a little bit less, but we're okay. Yeah. You've got to be able to think outside the box. I don't think despite everything that the government's saying and the banks are saying, we're starting to see now that where so many businesses have gone, oh, thank God I can get, I can get the loan, I can get the help, and it just isn't coming in time. Really? But yeah, so we think, or it's not coming at all. I mean, there are solid businesses that are, are being turned down for the, for the TBIL. So I, I think- That is absolutely outrageous. And quite frankly, is. the banks owe us. Yeah. The banks owe <laughs> us, yeah. right? Yeah. This is a time when it, I don't care about your percentages or whether you're going to make Precisely. anything out of this. This yeah. is where you pay back yeah. what happened in 2008. Absolutely. But it's, it's happening all over. It's hideous. And then, of course, you've got the amount of people who are still waiting to see if they're going to be able to get the universal credit as well. And that's not coming through. So that, that level of 
another area where we're both really lucky, I guess, is that we've both been able to go, okay, what else can I do? Without having to say, I need to rely on somebody else, yeah, what I've can I create? Been a fighter, always been a fighter yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, the fact is, like, since the day I opened my first wage packet at Harrogate Theatre in 1996, I've never had a regular wage. So mm. I've always had I've always had moments of, like, really close to the wire. Yeah. I think it's a, it's a lot more serious now because I've got the kids. Um, but I will always find a way. I always I always manage to find a way if, you know, um, before the kids, I, I decorated friends' flats and cleaned for friends. Like, literally just sent a panic text out to pals going, I'm, I'm in a lot of trouble. Is there anything anybody wants me to do? And I just got to work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, That's brilliant. Like, yeah, yeah. Because well, it's not as easy now because it's all got to be virtual. Yeah, but yeah. There's, there's but that won't last. Easy. That won't last. That won't last. I think, um, well, yeah, how long will it last? <laughs> well, when I was talking to Tanya Gray Thompson the other day, she reckoned it would be at least June. But then yeah. other people have said September, but I think people are just saying September. No, I'd, I'd say, I'd say June. Yeah, no, I'd say June for... That's um, my gut, round about June. Businesses and all of that stuff. But yeah. then they'll still have us practising social distancing for the foreseeable, I think. I think you know so. what's really weird? What's really weird? How quickly kids get conditioned. And it's, it's a little worry was when we were down at the velodrome uh, yesterday. One of Annie's little classmates was also on the velodrome, it's huge, it's huge. And they saw each other, and before we could do anything, either mum, you know, the, the, the kids gravitated towards each other. I was sort of chasing after, you know. Um, no! They stopped. They the stopped. Wow. They social distancing stopped and then chatted to each other. I was like, wow. Kids are far more amazing than we give them credit for sometimes. Yeah, don't they? they are, but it's also a little bit worrying, like you know, the world order and all that. How quickly, <laughs> how quickly as, a, as human beings we can be reprogrammed, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That can be a bit scary too. Yeah. So where you say you've you've always been a fighter, you've always found a way through things. Where do you think that comes from? Good northern stock. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be. No, do you know what? Even at school, because I was never that kid. Um, I was I was a kid that stuck up for the kids that were bullied, and yet I was the kid that would sit with the naughty kids, the smokers, and that. Because most of them did drama. Basically, if you did drama to any level at school, you either wanted to be an actor or you just wanted to get out of geography. Do you know what I mean? Um, so they were quite naughty. The kids that did drama. Um, so. I was never really a scaredy cat with stuff like that. I could talk my way out of anything. So when I say it stuck up for them, I didn't go in with the fisticuffs. Mm. I just always find a way of chatting it around. Like, what, why are you doing that? What are you doing that for? So I, I've, I've, I've always stood on my own two feet. I've never sort of followed the crowd. Um, and that's just continued into adulthood, I think. I mm. kind of just fundamentally know right from wrong. And, um, and I trust that. Um, and I think that works as well in terms of, I, I, I'm always thinking, I, I, sometimes when, you know, if I was on me on, I, I might be that person that wasn't so keen on it, really. Um, mm. My brain never never switches off, really. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, just always finding a way through, thinking, right, what could I do with that? And da, 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 da. I don't yeah. know. And um, thinking, what, why has life done this for me, rather than why has life done this to me? Yeah, totally. Massive. Totally. Massive. So given some of the life lessons you've had through the years, because obviously yeah, when you're in the arts, you're going to have peaks and troughs. You've already said that, you know, you've done cleaning, you've done all kinds of stuff. What would be your advice from the life lessons that you've learned over the years that you could give to other people who might be struggling now in terms of their mindset, keeping busy, whatever it takes to just survive this? And through the through the lockdown, you mean? Yeah. It is. It is a... What can you do if you're in a flat, though? It is nature, you know, it's, 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 surely even in London, if you're in a flat and you can open a window because there's no planes and hardly any traffic, you could just take some time to listen to the birds. I don't know. I haven't lived in London for so long. Um, but na nature for sure, just get in amongst it. Um, and exercise, I don't know people hate it, yeah. but... I've always exercised all of my life. 
I've, I've had it as part of my life. And I understand that it can be really, really hard if you've never done it. And the only time I never did it was after I had the twins. And so that's the only time when I had to struggle to get back into exercising, it was really, really hard. And I suddenly for the first time in my life went, oh, it's not that easy. Cause I, I've just always done it, football, marathons, you know, yeah. all of that. Um, and it was hard to get back in. But once you break that, it is amazing. Like I've done, I've done, I've done stuff this morning. We both do exercise in the morning while the kids, they have their first little TV session at like, they get up at six. So they're just in there for an hour. Ellie goes and does some yoga and I'm in the backyard doing skipping and all sorts of stuff. And I've got some weights out there and whatever. And, and it just sets you up for the day. You know, it does, it energizes you and gets the feel good endorphins happening. So yeah, stick a bit of Joe Wicks on. Do dancing, find something you love. Cycling, I bet loads of people who say they don't like exercise haven't been on a bike since they were a kid. There is nothing more like exhilarating, you know? So I, I think, yeah, that and nature. Hmm. And turn off the screens, turn off the screens, get off the screens, Yeah. get off the screens. Don't put the news on for a few days. You know, I haven't watched one of those briefings for four or five days. It was doing my head in. I couldn't bear it. So I thought, right, so eradicate it then. And I'll probably put it on again tonight, but on Radio 4 or something. But That makes such a difference. We haven't li I haven't listened to the news avidly for years. I mean, even as an ex-journalist, precisely because I'm an ex-journalist, I don't listen to the news because you know what the agendas are. Mm -hmm. So I, when this first started, I kind of made, made myself stop looking, listening to the news briefings and going and checking out the facts on World Health Organization, for instance which yeah. is probably as close as to fact we're going to get and just stop picking up the drama. And even, even these things, they're great for allowing us to keep in touch, but you've got to be so careful if you're just scrolling Facebook or something. It's so easy to you're just go right. into David drama. Doris. Yeah, picking up the drama, you're exactly right, because they just catastrophize everything. And I don't know yeah. why they never learn. I don't know why they, they don't learn that they're part of the problem. Because that releases endorphins too, doesn't it? And, you know, you've had the right idea. I did something similar a few days back. I was feeling a bit grumpy and I just went, it's because you haven't been going to your PT sessions. You haven't been going to the gym. Ding! Yeah. Another cartoon moment, light bulb over the head. So I went to set up a little garden gym. Same yeah. thing you did. It That's makes a such a difference. Yeah. Pull that skipping rope. I've got an old barbell from I don't know when. Absolutely. I found this little 13 minute stomach video. Very good. Very good for tons. Um, so I just I just put it all together and, and, and do it, put some music yeah. on and get on with it. And it's so easy to, even if you're just doing steps with a kitchen stool or something, there's always a yeah. way yeah. you can do something. But I think that's the flip. I think it's this, I've long said that, that we in the West are addicted to drama and it's because drama releases endorphins. And I, I kind of say it's, it gives you a, it gives you a high level hit, but it's low level energy. Yeah. Whereas things like dancing, singing, exercising. Dancing is great. You see, we do that in the afternoon. We put a disco. We've got this like little um, uh, thing that goes in the light that does like a disco ball in the lounge. Awesome. We put all the shutters on yeah. and we have a disco. Yeah, the kids yeah. love it. They absolutely love it. So they're like, they, they, that's part of our routine. They hit sort of five, half uh, five just before we go up for the bath at six. And they're like, is it disco time? And they know. And then all yeah. the tunes go on. We do all the ones from Sing. Have you seen Sing? It's yeah, yeah, it's yeah, is that the one with the singing pig? Yeah, amazing. yeah, yeah, love it. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah, amazing. I am that pig. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. It's just fantastic. It is. Yeah. It is. You can't be. Kids' films are better than grown-up films. I think these days. They are. Yeah. So I think that's it. There's, you know, when 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 I was doing all the work on the medicine path, one of the things that's really stuck with me, and a lot of the NLPers will try and claim it now, but it's older than that. The whole change body, change state. Don't just sit in it, move. Even if you're just clapping for five minutes or waving your arms about if you can't get out of your chair. Sing in, put on, put on your favourite song. Put yeah. on My Way. Blast yeah. it in the kitchen. Yeah, turn it up so loud well that you sound them. the same thing. Yeah, That's probably why I'm all right as well. Singing, singing is the one, yeah, for sure. So if you don't, yeah. Okay, those of you that don't want to do exercise, go sing your favourite song, yeah. bang it on. And if you think you're not very good at singing, A, so what? B, turn it up so loud that you sound amazing. <laughs> it's yeah. always a way so are there any daily practices that you're getting into you're saying that ellie does yoga a lot you've got your workout what else are you doing meditation mindfulness anything like that no i'm not hopeless for meditation my mother always said i should do meditation because i'm too i'm too mad up here oh heather heather, heather. No, I, 
to be honest, like my running and stuff like that, I find I find um, if I get to go for a jog, then then just I don't I don't listen to music when I go running. You know, I just I just get into the rhythm of my breathing and my feet on the on the pavement. So that Which works. is meditation. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, you're really good at meditation. You just do it on the move. Yeah, I've just never. I've no, so when I was marathon training, I mean, I do three three hour runs without music, and wow. um, so I loved it. Absolutely loved it. So. Um, there's that, um, I mean, through, through the day, we have a, a set routine now. So the kids watch a bit, we do our exercise. Then we set up something. We've been setting up a nursery for the twins, so putting out workstations of stuff. And Annie does a little bit of schoolwork-ish, fun, <laughs> fun type. She's um, five. And then we go out. Then, then that's our day trip out is in the morning. By the time we come back, it's, it's lunchtime. Then it's Disney quiet time, which is now. It's ace. Mm. Um, and then we have another bit of entertainment, tea, mental disco, bath bed, wine. <laughs> no swim, wine, no swim. Wine. <laughs> <laughs> not, too wine. not too much wine, but um, we do tend to have a little glass of wine as well. Not every oh, night, but it. yeah, well, like we won't, we, we won't have wine tonight. Ellie's going into work tomorrow, so um, yeah, we don't have it every night, but it's, it's quite a nice thing. I shouldn't say that. Why shouldn't you say that? Why not? I don't know, there might be like lots of people coming out with problems. <laughs> but judging, judging by the um, recycling bins down my road, there might be some people coming out with a few problems. You see, this is where I should be hoovering up, because with all my mad stuff where I do glass walk, and it's like, I keep trying to find, the, you know, the Whitney Neal bottles? Yes. And pinks and purples, it's like, I need those to make a really awesome branded glass walk. So yeah. drink lots of gin for me and say pink yeah. bottles. The pink ones, they would that be like the um the rhubarb one, the onyx. Yeah. Is it is there a rhubarb one? There is. Yeah. 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 Terrible. Yes. The trials of a glass walker, honestly. <laughs> so before we shut down, one last tip that you could give to anyone. You did that. I forgot huh? you did that. I forgot you did the glass walking. Yeah, glass walking, fire walking, all kinds of weird stuff. A very strong mind, haven't you? I know. Yeah, some people think I've got really strong feet, but I promise I haven't. No wussy as anything my feet. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> we'll get you doing that one day, definitely. I'd love to. I'd love to. Yeah, we'll do that. So, last tips for for anybody who is maybe feeling a bit down, worried about finances, isolating alone. Last last tip to them to take home from this. For sure, reach out. There has to be someone that you can talk to, even if it's in a WhatsApp. I'm finding we've got a WhatsApp group for our just for our road. Uh, which we've done because there's a few older people and um, who are isolating. So every time anyone goes to the supermarket, a message gets dropped like, does anybody need anything? Um, and it's built up a real community feel. So even if you don't feel like you've got friends that you could talk to, there will be people in your community that you can just try and get those links. And if you don't have a WhatsApp group or you don't have the links, be that person like the chap who did it for our street who posts a little bit of paper through the letterbox that says, shall we have a WhatsApp group? This is my number, I'm setting it up. Because I'm telling you now, you'll find people um, take you up on the offer, for sure. That's amazing. Um, yeah. I don't it's know been the same here. Yeah. We found the same here, because Ash and I are both technically on the on the vulnerable list. We have aspirin some respiratory issues. Ash has got MS. So we've been isolating for a week longer than everybody else around here. But we found that our neighbours have been amazing. Yeah, and we haven't done the please help. We haven't need to needed to. A little bit of pride keep creeping in, probably. Yeah, but the offers have been fantastic. I've even, even seen like strangers on Twitter. Normally, it's such a cesspit, you know, um, sort of saying I'm here for you. You know, when people have just put I'm, yeah. I'm not coping. Yeah, so use those opportunities. People don't say it unless they mean it. Yeah, yeah, definitely grab it. Yeah, I've had clients that live like half an hour or an hour away, even saying if you need anything, I'll swing it by. People will help, yeah. but it's, it's being brave enough to ask, isn't it? And just grab that hand. Yeah, I have no problem with asking for help. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the top of the mountain in the jar, but hey, you're doing it anyway. <laughs> yeah. So after this, if anybody wants to find you, what's the best place for them to, to come and look at what you're doing or get in touch? Where are you? Um, I am on Twitter um, at Heather Peace. I'm on Instagram at Heather Peace Official. Although at the moment I am locked out. If anyone wonders why I haven't posted since about six weeks ago, it's because I can't get back into my account. But I am working it out today. How very <laughs> dare they lock you out? Sorry, I tried to change my password and then they literally said this. We don't recognise this account. I'm like, 
I'll work it out. I just get a bit bored with all that technical stuff. It'll yeah, be something yeah. dead easy. Um, and I'm on um, Heather Peace Official on Facebook. But um, yeah, oh, and check my YouTube channel. I never push that. Maybe I'll do the gig on the YouTube channel and get a few people over there. I don't yeah. know. Well, you do it, if you do it via Zoom, you can stream it straight into YouTube and Facebook, I think. Yes. I know. I'll be full of you. Yeah, that's no problem. Is that how Jack Wick, uh, Thingy Wicks does it? Joe Wicks. I should think so. Right. Joe Wicks is great. The one thing I've been saying to people with Joe is remember all the local health and fitness guys as well. They were also doing loads of stuff for free. Yeah, we used our local gym. We did Joe Wicks the first week. I wonder how many viewers he's got now because we fell off quite quickly. Yeah. <laughs> no, we do. We're doing our fitness, but our own. I think it was that whole like ah panic in the first week, like oh my <laughs> god for Joe. <laughs> Do some PT. Yeah. And I was like, nah. My kids lost interest very quickly. <laughs> so yeah. YouTube channel address? Heather Peace Official. <laughs> <laughs> Search for Heather Peace on YouTube yeah. and you'll find her. Yeah. Website? Heatherpeace.com. Anything else I need to prompt you for? <laughs> no. I do a festival called Hear Her as well. All female lineup music festival. That's due for October. We'll see whether we're out of lockdown by then. <laughs> We should be, we should be. And where will you be announcing the details of this live online gig first? I'll do, do it people? on Twitter, Facebook, everything else, and I'll, I'll, I'll pop you a line, Taz, so that you can yeah, let do. people know as well. That'd be awesome. I will. And if we, I might try and, if I can time it with this, we can stick it onto the bottom of all the details of this too. That'd be amazing. Awesome. Heather, you have been amazing. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for asking me, Taz. It's lovely to see you and your pink hair. Yes, you're lovely to see you and your pink hair. And your it's gosh, studio. <laughs> <laughs> My little spaceship, I know I love it. It's an awesome spaceship. Yeah. We've all got spaceships and go spaceship. Yeah, go spaceship. And on that note, I should probably go. Take Bye. care. Thank you so much. Thanks, Tess. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.